What is the most annoying thing a guest has done in your home? <laughs> Invite their own guest to stay with us for 5 days, none of them were invited to stay over. Relatives. That is so fucking rude. It's borderline autistic I can't think of any other way to explain it. I can think of plenty of ways to explain it that don't involve being a cunt to autistic people. I'm literally autistic. This exchange has me rolling. These people got offended at you, for you. Ha ha ha. <laughs> My brother pulled this shit once. He was dating this girl for probably 6 months. Maybe a year. My brother asked if she could stay the night, I was surprised when my parents said okay. My brother was 21 or maybe slightly older at the time, so I guess it wasn't that big a deal. So she stays over then never fucking leaves. My parents aren't very confrontational, and she basically lived with us for a month. I think my brother told them near the end that she had problems at home. Okay, that sucks, but you kind of need to make these sorts of arrangements beforehand. My parents weren't really expecting a month long live and guest and feeding her too. She repaid them by stealing food from our pantry because we had lots to spare. <laughs> My brother is a good kid, but kind of naive at times. He had a friend in high school who seemed nice but definitely had some issues. At one point she'd moved back to the area and was having problems with her boyfriend, and my brother convinced my parents to let her move in with us, we had a spare room for a while. My parents laid out the house rules no significant others spending the night, you have to be working or in school, help with chores. Pretty standard fair and well, she broke most of them pretty quickly. She had friends over all the time, her on again off again abusive boyfriend was over a lot, she was a total slob, and it turned out, a thief. So much stuff went missing while she and her friends were around, final straw being my grandmother's engagement and wedding ring set that she'd left to our sister never saw it again. Thinking of her and her antics still pisses me off. <laughs> my best friend wouldn't fucking leave. When I asked her what her going home plans were after 6 days, she said I don't plan my life that way. We are 30. Do you mind if I do it for you? Step 1. Get the fuck out. I wonder this might work with my wife. She's like that. We are both basically kids, just in different avenues. I am a kid when it comes to how I have fun. She is a kid when it comes to responsibility. Left his trash everywhere and then started to complain because of that trash laying around. Is he a fucking simp put him in the pool and remove the ladder. Had a friend visit for a few days. We cleaned our spare bedroom for him, and when he left, there were soda cans, used plates, random food wrappers, just litter all over. This was after he said he made time to clean up. Never again. <laughs> Let their little kid wipe his ass with my guest towels. Instead of, you know, asking where the toilet paper is. When I was young my parents went on a vacation and sent me to stay with the school nurse for a week. One night I shit myself. I was so embarrassed and didn't want to tell anyone. I took the shit stained underwear and stuffed it behind a dresser in a bedroom. A week after I'm back home, my parents receive a package in the mail. This lady had found the shit crusted underwear, put them in a ziploc bag, and sent them back to us. This lady is in the comment section writing a story about you right now. <coughs> Not me, but someone I know. She was living with her future in-laws. She had just given birth and was putting her used pads under the bed. She was my good friend of mine too. I didn't even find out until her future in-laws were talking shit about her. I was like idk she's not like that from what I know. They showed me photos. I was disgusted. I had a flatmate who did this too. It was the strangest thing. Me too. We could've lived with the same girl. I just couldn't understand, used pads turn really rank, it was not a pleasure to clean up. <coughs> the kid whose parents didn't supervise him. He was probably 8 or 9 at the time, and would get into anything especially stuff computer related. He would dig through drawers and open boxes looking for gadgets to play with. Only to fuck them up or lose something. We finally told the parents they couldn't bring him back when he got into the kitchen and turned on the glass top stove while a pizza box was on it. Started a small quickly extinguished fire and the house smelled like smoke for about a week. Have a similar story. A douchebag kid of one of my wife's very new friends, met at school picking up the kids a few times, come over once. He ran straight upstairs, jumping the baby gate, jumped on my bed and went through my bedside drawers. As I went to run upstairs to get the little prick he came tumbling down, knocking the baby gate down and damaging the wall. He then proceeded to run across my couch before I grabbed him and threw him outside. His mom barely blinked and just said he can be a little crazy sometimes. Told her to fuck off and never come back. <coughs> my parents would invite a family over with a boy who was an asshole like that. Got into everything and always destroyed my stuff. Once he even stole a pumpkin from the neighbor's garden and threw it at me. That melon proceeded to slam into my nuts. Um, I believe it's a gourd. It all hurts the same when it's smashing your nuts. So you could say he was gourd in the nuts. Nah, I think he left his gourd down. <coughs> Fucking hell. I also had the pleasure of meeting my cousin's kid who was obsessed with remote controls and screamed his head off if he didn't have at least two in his hands of all times and was allowed to mash all the buttons and also go anywhere and everywhere he wanted at all times. My cousin and his wife had this smug bullshit attitude of, we don't want to bind our darling down with boundaries and the word no, we want him to be able to express his freedom and it was infuriating they literally banned the word no. We all decided to cooperate to keep the peace, but my dad hit his limit when the kid kept trying to pummel my grandma with the remote controls and grasped him firmly by his arms, looked him dead in the eyes, and very seriously said no. The kid stopped what he was doing and was very meek for the rest of times he was in the same room with my dad. Everywhere else he was the same and my cousin was mad my dad used the bad word. I invited a former college classmate to come and stay at my house when I found out he was homeless. 
I knew he had issues with drinking, but was not aware that he had come to include other addictions. It was late in the evening when I picked him up and brought him home. I showed him his room, the bathroom, told him to help himself to anything in the fridge. Less than two hours later I woke up to the smoke alarm going off. I guess he had decided to smoke some Benadryl that was in the medicine cabinet. I'm not really sure what went on, but he scorched my coffee table and a small patch of laminate flooring, plus he burned and melted a spot in my area rug big enough that I had to replace it. He also broke my favorite glass, and for some reason that still baffles me, smashed the remote for my TV into several pieces. Needless to say, I had to show him the door. The next day I told him he needed to go to the addictions clinic at the hospital and tell them he needed help because he was a danger to himself and others. People with bad addictions do weird ass shit. An old friend had a girl stay over one night when he got pretty drunk and took her home. She ripped the cables out of his live web servers, cut them up with the scissors, and left tiny sharp bits of copper wire in his bed and all over the house. At my son's first birthday party, my stepmom's mother who wasn't even invited made the comment, your wife says she isn't materialistic, but you sure have a lot of stuff. We were living in a small two-bedroom apartment, and my son's room which had toys and other presents was also my office and the only storage we had. She sounds like a total bitch. I hope you haven't had any interaction with her again. I try not to, but my dad and stepmom keep inviting her to things unannounced. And she keeps saying condescending things to me and my wife. She's just a peach. My wife also said you're not invited, but you sure did show up anyway. I've made this post before so I'll just copy paste it here. Not my house but my car. I don't have many rules for passengers when I'm driving, but there are two I will never budge on. 1. Wear your seatbelt. 2. Do not smoke in my car. I had just bought a car, it wasn't brand new, but I knew the previous and only owner, and I knew he was a car guy who took meticulous care of his cars inside and out. He wouldn't even sell me the car before he had given the engine a proper service. Within a week of getting the car a friend asked for a lift to the train station, I knew he smoked so as we walked to the car, I told him specifically to wait until we get to the station, before he lights up a 10 minute ride at most. I back out of the parking spot, drive to the exit of the parking lot, and as I check my left hand side for oncoming cars, I hear from my right the distinctive sound of a lighter sparking up. Dude could not even fucking wait until we were out of the fucking car park, before he just had to have his goddamn cigarette. I ask him what the hell he thinks he's doing, and he just looks at me and says relax, it's not like it's a new car. Fucker ended up walking to the train station. <laughs> Took explosive shits that left shit spattered all over the toilet every single day for the month that he was residing in our house. Didn't think to clean it up. Oh, my roommate visited you. Why do people think this is okay? We had a guest that did the same over Christmas, and I literally had to clean his shit because he was using a separate bathroom, and I saw it 20 minutes before my other guests arrived. How could you not be completely mortified? Okay this is gross, but one time I was sick and the exploding poop happened to me. I flushed several times with no luck of getting splatters off. I literally scrubbed the toilet with my bare hand and toilet paper to get it off. Gross but I swear to god I wasn't leaving that bathroom with my crap on the toilet. This was a friend's house who was having a party. Washed my hands for like 30 minutes after that. One of my mother's friends is not only a raging alcoholic, but is also on ridiculous amount of prescription drugs. One night she was staying with my parents and fell asleep in a leather recliner because of aforementioned alcohol and drugs. At some point in the middle of the night she shit herself, again because of the aforementioned alcohol and drugs, and instead of being a good guest and decent human being and being embarrassed by it and doing her damnedest to clean it up, she threw the blanket she was sleeping under over her mess and then went upstairs to sleep in one of the beds. Then she just told my mother about it in the morning and then left. My mother used bleach and every cleaner under the sun to clean up the mess, and she did, but she ended up just throwing the chair out, because how could you ever really look at it the same way again? The most shocking detail in this story is that my mother is still friends with this lady. <laughs> if anything is encouraging me to stay clean today, it's this. I've thrown up on myself and everywhere and pissed myself multiple times this is reddit I have no shame lol, but I cannot imagine just leaving it there, especially shit. Even that whacked out on the pills I still knew very well that vomiting on my friend's couch was a no no and really, really bad. Even if I didn't realize it in the moment I ensured that I did everything I could to fix the situation, as soon as I even just began sobering up. Like buy my friend a new couch, or clean the whole house for them, or give them money to have someone clean professionally. I would profusely apologize also, and if they wanted to cut ties with me for things like wetting myself at the dinner table, I fully accepted that. It's a disgusting thing to do and there's no excuse, and she's a scum human being for not caring about literally shitting on the couch. Also can I just point out that she went upstairs and slept in your parents bed with shit in her pants also. This woman is a piece of shit, arguably literally. Edit. Just to clarify, I don't think I'm any better than her at all. I'm just as horrible for doing those things, and my damage control doesn't make what I did any more acceptable. <laughs> my dad collects fossils and found the lower half of a human jaw. He called the police when he found it, but they told him it was quite old and couldn't do anything with it. In the end he was allowed to keep it, and the jawbone is on display in his poker room. My mother's cousin stayed with them for a visit, picked it up by each end, and pressed them inward exclaiming oh is this real? The piece snapped in half. Dad quietly removed the bits from my cousin's hands and left the room. He put it together with some scotch tape. Just wanted to give you some advice to pass on to your dad in case you're interested I'm a professional paleontologist, have a degree and a job at a big museum, and scotch tape is not archival and can damage fossils. Super glue however, is archival. It can be reversed using acetone. I'd recommend he use this to fix his fossils and remove any scotch tape very carefully. 
I was at work all day and I always close my door before leaving, always. My mum had guests over and decided hey, let's show the guests everyone's rooms and all the rooms in the house in general. Well, one lady, whom I had never met, didn't like how I arranged my room, so while everyone was at dinner, I worked from 11.30am to about 9pm, 6 days a week, so I wasn't there when this happened, she went into my room and rearranged my desk, the clothes in my drawers and closet, all my pictures, and threw out some knickknacks that were given to me by old friends, but she thought were trash I hadn't thrown out yet. I was pissed. She totally admitted it, but didn't seem to feel bad at all. My mum was upset too, but not as much as me. They're no longer friends, but I'm not sure why, probably cause she threw out some of my mum's knickknacks as well. Edit. Hello all. I'm surprised that this comment of my unfortunate loss of knickknacks and a woman I had never met before was my highest upvoted and most commented, so I thank all. Anyways, unfortunately I did not get or find my lovely knickknacks, as she decided not to tell me or anyone where she trashed them, since she thought they were not of value, although I felt I looked everywhere. It took me a good 30 minutes to an hour to fully realize my room had been rearranged. At first I was confused tbh, I let it sink in, and what just really pissed me off the most was my knickknacks being gone forever. My mom was the one who calmly told her to leave as I am not one to be confrontational, although I kept begging her to tell me where my knickknacks were, and everyone knew I was angry, but when I'm angry I cry, so everyone thought I was sad. It's been a couple years and I'm still very bitter about it. When my cousin was my roommate her trashy sad redneck boyfriend would come over and use all of my pots and pans, and then leave them for me to clean up after him. One night I got so pissed I dumped the entire sink full of their mess onto her bed and covered it with a blanket. Never again. Had a roommate that would forget he was cooking and burn the food into whatever pot or pan he was using, and then just leave a pile of ruined pots and pans in the kitchen. Whenever his girlfriend would come over he would just shove everything in the oven to hide it, rather than just throw it out. After the second or third time of me preheating the oven for food just to open it up and realize that I'm baking a stack of ruined pots and pans, I just took everything and set it on his bed. He came home with his girlfriend and had to explain why all these ruined dishes were on his bed. Never said anything to me about it, but he moved out shortly after lol. <laughs> Last weekend I spent all day cooking for all my friends. I slow cooked chicken all day, made fresh salsa and guac, etc. We all got drunk and ate. I put everything away so I could save it for meals later. I'm poor so it was supposed to feed me for a bit. Well after I went to bed, this fucking cunt took the food out to make tacos and didn't put it away. So I had to throw away all the food I spent all day cooking. I'm still pissed and getting mad just writing this. I feel you. A similar thing happened when I cooked a massive three pork dinner, and all the leftovers were going to be the remaining meals for the week. The person who was supposed to put all the leftovers away got really drunk and forgot. I hate it when I do that. I'm such a dumbass. LOL gave up drinking three years ago though, but I still feel mad at myself about forgetting those leftovers. <laughs> Ate my go-gurts I had in the fridge for bad days while I was recovering from a major spinal surgery, encouraged the other guests to join in, hugged the sofa which I needed to sleep on, since my back couldn't handle the floor again, still very much in recovery from a major surgery, refused to give up spot on said sofa, acted offended when I left the room to sleep on another sofa, didn't flush the toilet, almost broke my laptop doing something I told her not to do because it could break my laptop. No matter how much you've missed your friends while spending over a month in recovery, do not invite them over for a sleepover when you're still in a lot of pain. Also just don't invite assholes. She wouldn't give up her spot on the sofa when you had just had a major surgery. Oh, that would not sit well with me blood boiling from this threat intensifies. <coughs> Wasn't home when this happened, but some family friend I've never met and their kid comes over one afternoon. Kid gets bored and decided it's a great idea to disassemble every Lego build I've kept over the last 10 years. Almost everything was built from imagination so no instructions to rebuild again. I was devastated when I got home seeing Lego pieces spread across the entire floor of my room. Kill. That's horrible. I have a Death Star and Millennial Falcon my son built he's in college now, and I would kill anyone that took them apart. Edit. You're all too funny. I wish I could blame Spellcheck, but it was just me being stupid. <coughs> Decorated the Christmas tree. A bit of backstory. In my family, the Christmas tree isn't just some pretty thing to look at. It's a relic of family history. Every ornament was a gift from a family member or friend. Some of them were generations old. Decorating the tree was something we all did together, and we'd put the ornaments we'd been gifted on the tree. I wanted to pass that on to my daughter. That each ornament was special and meant something. Then, along came my late father-in-law's girlfriend. She was a self-proclaimed authority on everything. From how to properly cook carrots up to how to decorate a Christmas tree. Knowing how she was, I made it clear that we were going to hang the ornaments together after we got back from some last-minute shopping. We got back, and she decorated the tree herself. She stood proudly in front of it, waiting for us to tell her how beautiful it was. Bitch simply didn't listen. Now you've got me having imaginary arguments with a woman I've never met because she decorated a Christmas tree that isn't mine. <coughs> Using one of my socks to jerk off then stuffing it under my couch for me to find a crusty sock a month later. I immediately knew. So disrespectful. I put it on Facebook and tagged him in it. Did he reply to your tag on Facebook? Oh yeah, lol. He said he forgot. Which I understand because when you're jerking off, you're not exactly in the right state of mind when you finish. However he got shit from hundreds lol he deserved it. Yay, but his post not clarity shooter helped him come up with a better place to put a cum sock. Like maybe the garbage or your dirty fucking laundry. 
A chick I had met online years prior asked to stay she is from the US I am in Australia. She didn't shower the whole time and literally stank up my house, made a mad mess, ate everything, then when she was leaving I was baking a cake for someone at work's b-day. She said goodbye and left to go to another chick's house. I discovered later that day she had taken the cake with her. The next house she went to she didn't shower either we all met on the same website, and the next victim of her stank was now living in Australia from California, and we regularly hand out still, she ate all their food too, stank twice as bad as a heat wave occurred, and then drank all the alcohol from their house, replacing it with water and tea. They didn't discover this until weeks after she left as they weren't big drinkers. I can't believe she just stole the cake. That is such a dick move. I was baffled hey, like this bitch stole a cake. When she arrived at my friend from Kali's place, about 40 minutes from mine, she didn't have a cake. Next level cake thieving, footy team. I asked my friends a couple to watch my house while I was away. By watch I meant check in every few days and bring in my mail. They thought I meant stay there, sleep in my bed, make a huge mess, stink up the kitchen with burnt food which they left in the pot for a week, ruining the pot, and well, I guess that's it. I was most displeased. Edit. A homonym. I guess I shouldn't answer questions right before I go to sleep and forget to proofread. I want to blame autocorrect, but who knows. To be fair, it was pretty funny. What else would you do with a food witch? I'm going back to sleep now. I'll try to read all these comments in a bit. Let my indoor cat out on Christmas Eve. And by let out I mean left three doors wide open. The one to my apartment, the foyer, and the outside door. The cat eventually came home after four hours of my husband and I roaming the neighborhood with cat toys and treats, me sobbing and screaming his name. Which is Zion. Which is a weird thing to be yelling on Christmas Eve dressed for church and swinging a cat toy like the shame bell in GOT Unforgivable. I hope you read them the riot act. My kitties are all indoor only, so this shit makes my blood boil. I had a guest that would walk around the house while she was brushing her teeth which was no big deal. The problem was when she was done she'd use the nearest sink to spit and rinse her mouth out, which was often the kitchen sink that had dishes soaking in it. And she clipped her toenails at the dinner table. I really do not like this person. It was a long three weeks. At the dinner table? That's possibly the most horrendous habit I've read so far. 20 years old in college I had an apartment, a chihuahua, and a roommate. Computer was in the living room. Roommate brought a couple friends over to smoke marijuana. Friends found my can of air duster. Friends inhale it, talk in a strange voice, and start laughing so hard that one of them hocks a huge loogie and spits it right on the carpet. Me. WTF bro, did you seriously just do that? Friend says he's clean it up, reaches down barehanded and spots one of the chihuahua's mini tennis balls. Friend. Ha 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 this thing is so small. Friend whips the mini tennis ball at computer desk, takes a hard bounce and drills my chihuahua in the face I. Me. GTFO. They leave. Roommate apologizes and never brings those two dirtbags over ever again. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Tell me what you dislike or love about this video so please comment below and hit the bell icon so you're notified anytime a new video is released. This is a Wecromedia production.